Hello guys and welcome to a brand new video. Today I'm here with Shaman King episode number 32. All right, the previous episode, we get more, more of Anna and Yo's relationship, their backstory, and we get quite a few information in the previous episode. What is happening with Anna? Why is like, you know, what's the actual uh, details of the things that happens to her? For example, we got more information about how she is able to kind of uh she's she's kind of similar to asakura how and how she is able to feel what others are feeling is not it's technically not kind of i guess um mind reading it's kind of mind reading but at the same time he's, she's able to understand the feelings the negative emotions all the positive emotions vice versa you know and that kind of you know like uh makes uh demons materialize and which is kind of similar to what uh, happened to how and when in how's backstory we get his part of the story why he like you know while he was like this amazing um you know omyoji asakura how but because of his um the way he was able to feel what others are feeling that's why he was able to gain all the negative emotions as well and due, because it was in the olden times where there's war and a lot of things were happening it was like uh, the world was in constant war and it was not as peacetime as it is currently in Anna's like you know war, like in the modern world how was affected a lot more by that and that's how he came to the decision that I will make a world which is only for shamans and uh like we get the like you know the actual backstory why he how is like this and what is the actual background bef be before that and we also got a little uh, story about matamune how he met how and how how took you know care of him and he became a nekomata all that stuff so quite a few information as i said like you know we got to know in the previous episode so yeah and uh, let's see what this episode brings we see um uh <clears throat> yo standing up for anna at that moment in the convenience store and like how like you know how this is a lot different than anna has always like you know like this is quite new for anna because i'm i'm sure like you know everyone kind of ran away from her whenever stuff like this happened and but yo is probably the first one who actually stood up at that moment even though he was fearful of his you know own life even if his own life was in danger so yeah all that stuff and so let's see what this episode brings this is episode 32 i'm really liking this arc because it has quite a few things about anna and yo the whole backstory and like you know it, it connecting to asakura how as well so this, this is a really great arc so yeah so yeah without further ado let's get started this is episode 32 of shaman king so i'll be putting subtitles and the timer here sync it to whichever is your preference and let's get started all right so here's the countdown Three, two, one, go. Yo, Yama is another name for Osarazan. Oh, oh. It's another Beyblade reference. <laughs> what? <laughs> I love the Beyblade, Beyblade references. Oh, I, <laughs> you know what? I kind of forgot about the whole scene with Ren. Like Ren is almost dying, and like now we are seeing the backstory flashback. Like <laughs> I actually forgot for a moment that we were actually having a very serious situation in the real world. Like Ren is like you know injured. Uh, uh, Jan is going to help him while Yo has forfeited completely. Like all of this was happening in the real world. Like I'm like so invested in this backstory that I forgot. 
Damn. All right, let's see. <laughs> okay, all right. Yep. <laughs> all right. I, I okay. Oh, this is like okay. There must be like musicians or something. Wait, who's this? Are they okay? Is this some kind of a reference? I think it is some kind of a reference, which I probably am unable to understand. Okay. <laughs> Wait, let's listen to the other one. That this one. <laughs> the taste in music is so <laughs> okay i i can understand this but... okay yeah as i said their taste in music very much resembles them <laughs> hmm. <clears throat> oh. Well, this is your. <laughs> oh, oh, she can feel. Oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> okay, well. <laughs> oh, oh, my God. Uh... <laughs> okay. Well, well, the second slap. Hmm. New Year's, okay. True. Yeah. Oh, this is the 31st of December. Okay. Hmm. 
Yeah, like there'll be a lot of people. So like, I guess, you know, like it's very... Like, like, you know, like so many people's feelings and thoughts will come, okay. <laughs> mm. <laughs> yeah, she's afraid of the demons and oh <laughs> it'll work out <laughs> yours Favorite line, it'll, it'll work out. Hmm. <laughs> <coughs> Yeah, oh my, and that was what, just what I was saying, like so many people and they'll all be, yeah. Okay, that's, that's good. Wait, I thought Matamona was strong, so. Yeah, <laughs> as I said, that's your favorite line. <clears throat> okay wait what what's happening oh my god okay Oh boy. Yeah. Oh, oh my God. Oh my God, the big one is here. Oh my. Damn. <clears throat> oh. Yeah, oh. Whoa. Okay, yeah, this is quite dangerous. Like, I was thinking, like, Mataman spirit is strong, so... Why is he afraid? But, no. 
Look at your body possessor. Oh, wait. Wait, what the? Why is Bob here? How uh, I Ringo? Oh my god. Oh! Damn, he's, he's wearing clothes. What the hell? Whoa! Yeah, this is danger. Okay. I don't think yeah, this is possible. Yeah, like her own. Oh boy. Yeah, oh. May, uh, I don't know, like, what do you even do in this situation? Yeah, okay. <laughs> Damn, he's shivering. Whoa, thousand eighty. Oh my god, so he, yeah, this is how he's going to go away, I think. Like, the Furioku that is within him is going to be exhausted and... Whoa. And that answers the question, why is he still here? Like, you know, like, like he's not contracted with anyone. Cat don't <laughs> Probably because it's Oh 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 interesting Wow Okay. Oh, okay. Oh, that's what this is. There you go. That answers the question I had. As long as my Furuku lasts. <coughs> yeah.
Ooh. Oh my god, it sliced him. Whoa. Okay. Oh, 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 it's wow. He understood. He understood that it'll be. It's laughing. Yeah. Otherwise, why is he wearing a shirt? Or... And I'm guessing it can regenerate as well. Oh no. Oh. Can talk as well. Wow. Okay. Oh my god. I think Anna really needs to do something here, you know, like as you said, that her own feelings will. Okay. Oh! <laughs> What the? What the? He's trying to make her. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like more negative feelings. <clears throat> yeah. Oh my god, there they are. And he'll regenerate, I'm guessing. Place where most spirits gathers. Okay. Oh my god. Close for winter. So how do we go? Okay. Oh. <clears throat> Wait, what? Whoa, this guy! Is this a shaman or something? No, but he wasn't able to see the demon. Grandson? <laughs> Good chat. Wait, so this guy is... Uh...
Oh, okay. He's, he's taking the car. Okay. Oh my god. Okay. Okay. Okay, I was thinking like how is this guy going to help him because he's not a shaman and then I realized okay <laughs> We can just take a car like <laughs> Like watching anime has made it like you know, <laughs> made, made our mentality something like this that we have kind of forgotten that we actually have cars and vehicles to actually <laughs> Go somewhere like as soon as you said that okay, how are we going to reach there and you know? Uh, Matamon is like we can't reach there because it's closed off. I was like, okay, so what's going to happen? Are they going to uh, What type of shamanic power is he going to use or is someone going to help them using their shaman powers to Transport there. It never did <laughs> come into my mind that you can just take a car there <laughs> Wow, <laughs> like <laughs> Oh my god Okay. <clears throat> okay, this this episode also answers the question like how is Matamune still existing? Like without any contract, proper contract. And we kind of understand what happened. It it's it's basically um how's extra Fuyoku that was given in the there you go. In the necklace so <coughs> yeah okay so this episode uh, we get the continuation from there um, Anna and Yo are kind of like you know like talking with each other and they're becoming better acquainted warming up to each other now okay one thing uh, when they were watching the television uh, like there's like Bob and there's this another person Ringo I think yeah that was her name now at, at the beginning I thought maybe like this is this like some kind of a reference of something you know like some kind of a, maybe like a singer or something maybe there existed a singer like this uh, you know and they're kind of referencing that but then I realized that no like this is just like a character in the show I think so at least because like animals kind of do this sometimes you know like for example like for example someone's watching a television or something uh, you know in an anime and there you see like there's like some singer who's singing who's probably a reference to some person to some singer who actually existed in the real world you know? like sometimes they do stuff like that and that's why i was thinking like maybe this was like some kind of some kind of reference i'm not sure maybe i don't think this is a reference this is probably a character because they also kind of showed um uh, them in the uh, in the uh, what do you call that in the transition you know uh, the the way they kind of shows different characters they showed uh, Bob and Ringo so I think these are actual characters in this show so it's like like they're I don't know like they they seem like some important characters or something <laughs> who knows um maybe maybe this is just for one episode yeah it, it, it must be like the, the way they were introduced and how like you know anna kind of tells the story of ringo i think that was the name ringo yeah um i feel like maybe they are some important characters but maybe not maybe they're just for this one episode but anyways i'm i'm thinking too much about this all right moving on um <clears throat> now <laughs> okay uh <laughs> Bob's song and Ringo's song, you know, like as I said, like the way <laughs> Anna and Yos, their uh, taste in songs also kind of reflect their own um, themselves. Like Bob was singing like a song, like as Anna said, you know, it's like a weird song, it's like a happy kind of a song. That would it was just like, yeah. It was it was very I think like a happy kind of a like you know song weird with weird some weird lyrics and this basically um like and a very chill song I guess as well this basically is uh, yo like yo is like that like you know <laughs> sometimes weird sometimes um like, you know doesn't make sense but it's very chill and very like, you know nice uh happy that type of a character 
while Ringo's song uh, as like she, she's saying that uh, what, what is it like don't come okay here it is just like mine it's not leaving I hate it's just you I never want to talk to you but that can uh, never be because I've got a grudge with you like these lyrics you know and these lyrics and when Yo says that oh Ringo is kind of scary <laughs> and Anna says that she only looks scary Ringo dresses like that and acts up to hide her vulnerability like all these things like this is basically both of them like their taste in songs is also kind of reflect on them and that's what you also said after that like it's kind of like you that means <laughs> and yeah <clears throat> and it's, it's funny like you know since anna can actually realize what the other person is thinking um <laughs> yours inner thoughts leaked into her and she she became embarrassed <laughs> Like damn, and just slapped him. And like <laughs> that was funny. And then uh, Yo says that okay, like if like we are like you know like your problem, we're going to solve that. But if in some way it it does not um like you know get solved, then I'm going to become the shaman king, and I'm going to help you. Like just like how he always like you know said this to everybody, uh, even in the. Uh, first few episodes I, f I think for Hororo as well he said something like this like yeah if you're not able to become the shaman king i'll become the shaman king and i'll like you know do like do I i'll do everything that you not everything that you want he said something like i'll help you or something like that yeah he said and i'll make sure your dream comes true yeah that's what he said so <clears throat> like and then he said that yeah like not only for him he's going to become the shaman king and make everyone's dream come true and like obviously like there must be a moral compass like you know with that because obviously you cannot make some like you know uh bad person's dream dream come to some evil dream no obviously not there needs to be a moral compass in that but still like for all the good things that people want which will help others uh you know maintain peace these type of dreams which are inherently good He's going to make them come true and he's going to help everyone that's his dream of after becoming the shaman king and this obviously this happened a lot earlier than Horohoro's thing this is like a flashback so the the first person who did he said this is to anna like i'm going to help you after i become a shaman king i'm going to make your dream come true and the, the thing he said about um uh like the the new year wish <clears throat> was also interesting which is kind of true you know like uh we do make uh you know like make genuine wishes to god but that, that's also kind of like you know telling us like making a resolution to us and you know like uh kind of making the fact concrete that yeah i'm going to try doing this like it's making a resolution kind of um as they say like you know uh, gods help those who help themselves and that's also like you know making your conviction to do something to keep going till like you know in that path unless and until you get your desired results for example like any any kind of a wish like let me like let's take a simple wish let's like i'll i'll pass my tests <laughs> So if you say that to God, ask that wish to God, and then you don't study at all, obviously you, you won't pass. This is this is not magic. So <clears throat> like people who are genuinely concerned about that, they pray to God and they try to do that, like to get desired results. And praying to God is kind of like something like that. If you think of it in that way, it's like making a resolution that yes, I will do this. And yeah that's what he says like interesting that was like an interesting part i quite liked that portion how yo kind of explains that <clears throat> like that, how old is yo he's 14 or 15 isn't it like damn like, <laughs> for his age he's his you know understanding of the world is immense like <laughs> oh boy <laughs> Like, I guess all anime characters are like this, you know, like they understand so much well about the world while they're just like nine or ten years old. 
so <laughs> it's not surprising <laughs> but yeah anyways okay and then uh, Kino is kind of getting fearful about the fact that this is a uh, new year's a new year's visit a lot of people will be there and people's selfish desires which is again like you know obviously there will be people who are going to ask for maybe something nice <clears throat> maybe something <clears throat> genuinely good free of malice uh, positive emotion filled for example uh, i wish my parents are healthy you know something like that i wish my friends are healthy this this year something like this you know, these are like positive filled um <clears throat> emotions and wishes that you can go and ask to god for there will be no malice in that there will be no negative emotions in that but take another example uh, as i said like um i wish like uh, uh what can i say like i wish um, yeah let's take the test example like you know i wish i uh i am you know i'm able to pass my tests something like this it kind of seems like a positive uh, wish, but there is uh, a negative thing in that, which is, I, I guess, um, what can I say? Um, like you're asking for something, you know, and it's kind of like, uh, what can I say? Uh, I, I'm not able to explain it properly, but it's kind of like a negative emotion in, in there. Unlike the wish where you actually ask for people's well-being. No. Oh, yeah, and I, I can probably explain it properly now. You're asking something for yourself. You know, uh, unlike the other wish where you're basically asking for good health. So I don't know if I'm able to properly make sense or if this makes any sense. But that type of wish or these type of wishes, which has something a little like, you know, like small bits and pieces of negative emotions in, in them will get accumulated and affect Anna. And like yeah as you know said like where is that section like the selfish emotions where is that mm. okay here we go and everyone will be fixating one selfish desires for their wishes yeah this thing selfish desires yeah that's what i was trying to say you know there is a kind of a small little selfish desire in in that wish where like let me pass for my tests or something like that in that manner or let me uh, get this thing you know some kind of thing like i hope i am able to uh, accomplish this stuff like this you know these are like selfish desires okay they'll be especially selfish because of this yes recession oh interesting i did not actually i wasn't i kind of missed this portion this year's recession true okay that's okay that's also another reason okay the 108 earthly desires will create a demon like we've never seen before so like if you actually think about it in that way then all wishes are bad i guess isn't it like the thing that i said before uh, for example good health of your parents family or your friends um i think that's also kind of selfish isn't it if you think of it in that way if you actually stretch it you know in that manner then that's also like an earthly desire selfish earthly desire that means wishing in itself is like a um, yeah like isn't it it's like a neck i don't know like this is like some <laughs> needs some broad understanding like in a spiritual level which obviously i don't have <laughs> like i i'm unable to do but yeah if you stretch it like that then everything is probably like you know filled with earthly desires which is some way or the other a little bit selfish so yeah anyways okay I'm, I'm i'm thinking too much about this like let's just move on uh, okay so yeah as kino says that yeah this is this will be like the worst time for them to go uh, the demons will be out and because of you know anna they'll kind of accumulate and take a more bigger form and that and that moment i kind of thought like what is our is to even to be scared about like we saw matamune before he seems pretty strong but oh boy, I was wrong. Like <laughs> after like you know that scene when we actually see the big demon materializing, I was able to realize that yeah, this is this probably a bad idea because the demon that materialized, yeah, he's he's pretty dangerous. I I feel like so 
not on yeah and we kind of got the proof that he is dangerous so that's what um kino was actually afraid of rightfully so because um okay where is that section where he kind she kind of says that uh your furyoku will go out here is and uh, the furyoku that your body possesses uh will this be the day you finally exhaust it and that kind of answers my question which again is further um solidified by uh, matamuri's explanation later on uh okay so the whole thing with um anna again like you know, it's affecting anna the whole people all the people that are gathering there and a bigger demon emerges and okay and then we get a little flashback of um how and matamune and it's really interesting to see the past you know like we see that there's like as um how explains that there are um spirits stationed about kyoto by omyoji to protect the city from evil invaders like excuse me like it's, it's very interesting to see the past uh how everything was you know like we are seeing like a, a spirit kind of sitting down and as soon as how you know passes that road stands up and kind of bows to how i doubt anyone is able to see the spirit except how and matamune so and the, the spirit also knew that yeah like asakura how is going so that's why he kind of stood up for like you know respect and kind of bowed so okay and then here is where how i kind of explains how um matamune will be able to you know uh will be able to keep living even after he dies like you know his animal form dies um he says that i'd like you to your spirit to continue to protect me um he gives him uh those beads that we kind of see where this all-powerful medium until your flesh returns to dust oh so he, okay so he had to wear that when he is alive unless and until he died and he had to keep wearing that okay um your soul will be energized by my furyoku and you will live on as near immortal okay un i understand for as long as my furyoku lasts um yeah he'll he'll be able to uh be alive now one thing that is kind of actually i don't know like a little bit weird which i think about now we can kind of see like in this episode where uh, matamune says that if i use my furyoku all my power you know i might not be able to survive because you know like all of the furyoku will be gone and then i won't be able to like, keep myself materialized and something like that i guess so the thing that's actually weird here is as far as i can remember they kind of said that 500 years ago uh, he was in a shaman fight wasn't he so how was he able to f win the fight like he had to fight with how you know the patch tribe how you know and he defeated him how was very formidable i'm sure of it even in that like you know 500 years ago so that means he was able to fight how with that residual um, furyoku that was in the beads and was able to survive even after that like, that's what's actually so so does that mean that um, he w did not exhaust all his furyoku even after fighting and defeating how at that moment otherwise how will he, how he's how is he able to still keep himself materialized if it had not like you know it, it only makes sense if the furyoku did not run out at that moment so that means th thousand years ago how gave him the necklace the beads and after he died he became a spirit and was able to keep himself materialized because of the residual furyoku that was given to him he that was a thousand years ago fast forward 500 years ago he fought with how defeated how the patch village how and he still was able to uh, have more residual furyoku so he was able to keep existing and then now that the flashback is happening he's saying that okay it might like you know it might run out now finally is that how it happens happened so that means um 
Hao gave him a lot of Furioku because he was able to defeat Hao with... Well, I guess he had a partner with him because it was not all alone that he fought with Hao. So, you know, like, um, uh, the one, I, I can't remember his name, but the partner who he fought with, you know, 500 years ago with Hao, against Hao. So yeah, maybe it is something like that, you know, like he, he, he was able to keep his Furoku for so long, even after he used some of it, I'm sure, you know, 500 years ago, while he fought with Hao. Anyways, okay, so yeah, like, th this really is kind of, I'm guessing it's kind of, you know, setting up the premise to actually, you know, for him to, I don't know, like he, I'm sure after this, after this flashback, we'll probably see at the end of the flashback that he, he won't be able to uh, keep living. I'm sure it is going to, something like that is going to happen. Because, you know, like, as he said, like, he's going to probably use up all his Furyoku now. To fight with the demon. And yeah, and the demon is pretty formidable. It, it can talk, it can, it, it can think, it can, like, there's a lot of things. And it can even provoke you. Like, damn, like, <laughs> like, it, it was provoking Anna at that moment. Because he knew that, like, you know, provoking her will make the negative emotions within her even more rampant. And he'll be able to recharge himself or regenerate himself. And, and then he started running off to Osorezan, where more spirits kind of gather. Oh boy. So, yeah, I think that was it. Is there anything else? <laughs> I love uh, uh, the voice acting of the demon. He was like, he was like oh no. Oh, it kind of, kind of reminded me of Jojo. <laughs> Anyways. Okay, and in the end, we get to see the guy, Gu-chan. That's, that's his name, yeah. And he, like, I was kind of thinking, like, he's not a shaman because he was un unable to see the demon before. So how is he going to help? And then I realized that, yeah, there is a thing called modern... <laughs> you know, modern uh like what do you call them like there are modern stuff which they can use the power of science for example cars like my mind kind of went to a direction i was thinking like how are they going to be able to go to osorezan because yo is not a shaman you know at, at least at this moment and matamune i don't know like maybe matamune will be able to go because of his own power but he's probably going to die in that process because he's going to use more Furyoku. So how are we going to go there? And then Gu-chan comes and he says that, oh, I'll take you. And I was like, wait a minute, he's not a shaman. How is he going to take us? And then he brings out his car. I'm like, okay, yeah, I'm an idiot. Like, obviously. <laughs> Cars exist. So yeah, I forgot that for a moment. <laughs> okay, so that was it. That was my reaction to... um. Shaman King episode number 32. So if you guys enjoyed this video, be sure to press the like button and subscribe if you're new to the channel or you haven't subscribed and comment down below anything you want to say, anything you want to let me know and I'll check them out. So that's it. Thank you guys for watching and I'll see you guys next week with another episode of Shaman King. Until then, goodbye and have a nice day.